Am I the a-hole for refusing to adopt my daughter's half-sister? Four years ago, my ex-husband revealed that he had been having an affair with his co-worker Leah who was pregnant with her child Ava. We divorced and have kept split custody of our daughter Kate. Our divorce was accompanied by a strained relationship with my ex's family as I discovered they had known about the affair long before I did and kept it from me. Needless to say, trust was shattered and we only communicate with matters involving Kate. Recently, my ex-husband and his wife passed away in a car accident, and as a result, I got full custody of Kate. But I made a conscious decision not to take in Ava. I am fully aware that Ava is not responsible for her parents' affair, and I acknowledge that she has already suffered a great loss with the passing of both her parents. However, I have actively avoided interacting with Ava in the past during pickup and drop-off times, and we are not close. My ex's family is now calling me the a-hole for separating two sisters, particularly after such a traumatic event. They point out that Leah has no other family members who can take care of Ava, and they believe it is my responsibility to step up. While I understand their perspective, I don't think that Ava is my problem. I don't feel a connection to her, and I am not obligated to take on the responsibility of raising her. The resentment I feel towards my ex-husband and his family has clouded my judgment and made it difficult for me to empathize with them. Edit, I would like to clarify, if I don't take in Ava, she will go to live with my ex's family, who live about four hours away from where we live. I understand for Ava, this move to a new city will not help her, as she is going through a lot right now. But I don't think having her with me is the best for either of us, as I am basically a stranger to her, and at least she has a relationship with my ex's family already. Now for the top comments. Not a-hole. Leah has family. Your ex-in-laws. Right? This isn't even one of those where the girl will go into foster care, which still wouldn't automatically make this OP's responsibility. She has family that she knows. That's obviously a better answer than a woman she will definitely be able to tell does not care about her as much as she does her bio child. How would that be best? Two parents are gone. There are no great answers. Only the best option in a sucky situation. OPS Guardian is pretty far down the list. Not a-hole. My ex's family is now calling me the a-hole for separating two sisters, particularly after such a traumatic event. They point out that Leah has no other family members who can take care of Ava. Your ex-husband's family said his daughter, their niece slash grandchild slash cousin slash whatever, only has you to step up? Your feelings concerning Ava are powerful, and maybe chat with someone about them. Kate would likely appreciate having a continuous relationship. That said, the very people angry with you are the people who can step up for Ava. It would be one thing if this was like a representative with a foster care system, or your family, or Kate. No, the people giving you grief are the actual next of kin. This is absurd. The feelings you are having are real, but they are ludicrous to be the ones that put this to you. It makes more sense for me, a total stranger, to try to guilt you into Ava's care than Ava's family. I'm flabbergasted, so I know you must be in a loop. They are absurd. If anything, what is more jarring for a child is to go not only to a new home they don't know, but also where they don't know the adult responsible for them. Add in the additional layer of Ava being the product of Opie not only losing her husband and the life they had built together, but also her in-laws and extended family on her husband's side. That was a trauma for Opie. It would not be good for Ava unless Opie had built a relationship with her and was able to separate out that trauma. And if Opie can't, then she isn't a safe space for Ava, which there is no shame in Opie for that. It's not her responsibility to do that, and the emotions she is experiencing are valid. It just means she's not someone Ava should be forced upon. So Ava going to her father's family, even if it is a new place, will mean she is with people she knows and trusts, and in physical environments she is familiar with. Maybe Opie can work on being more connected to Ava, given she needs to help foster Kate's relationship with her sister. But that's only up to Opie. Opie is perfectly entitled to work out visitations and parties, zooms and invites to events that will keep the girls in touch. Without putting Opie and Ava in a forced relationship, that's not healthy for either of them. Not a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister it's her own fault she's alienated from the family? I am one of three siblings. 
29 female, 27 female me, and 22 male. This all started about 5 years ago, when my older sister came to me and told me she was looking into our genealogy and wanted me to do one of those novelty genetic tests. I wasn't enthusiastic about it, but she was weirdly insistent, so I gave her the samples she asked for and moved on, not really giving it much more thought. At no point did I have a digital login for any results, and I also never thought to mention this to my parents. A few months after this, sister moved six hours away for another job and was non-communicative. She would call dad every once in a while, but brother and I found that if we didn't call slash text her first, we wouldn't hear from her, and she basically cut mom off outright. When questioned about this, she would refuse to acknowledge that's what she was doing. Ultimately, we all just accepted it. Mom was totally baffled and brokenhearted, and the rest of us naturally became less close with sister as a result. Even she and dad only talk a few times a year now, and none of us have seen her in person in five years. Earlier this year, brother did 23 and me and got weird results. That led to hard conversations. Mom and dad came clean that the three of us were donor-conceived, a choice they made because dad is infertile. They apologized for not telling us earlier, but dad felt strongly about not telling us because he never wanted us to think of him as any less of our dad. Dad called sister and told her this too after we talked, and she basically had a breakdown on the phone. It turns out that she knew dad wasn't her bio father, and firmly believed for five years that mom had cheated on dad, and had been nursing intense resentments as a result. Apparently, she did a genetic test five years ago, and was puzzled that the ancestry info didn't match with what we knew about dad's family. That's when she came to me to get a sample. She sent it to a lab with hers and they confirmed the results were genetic half-siblings, with the same mother and different fathers. She drew her own conclusions from there, that dad was my bio father and not hers, and that mom had had an affair, and uprooted her life to get a fresh start. She's now furious about the situation and feels like she's been robbed of the last five years. When we last talked, I was maybe less sympathetic than I should have been, and told her cutting us off with no explanation was an insane move, and if she'd told us even a fraction of what was going on, it could have been cleared up years ago. I acknowledged mom and dad messed up here by not being truthful about our genetic identities, which I'm also struggling with my own feelings on, but in the end, it was her decision to do this dramatic move and slow fade with zero explanation. I also expressed how hurt brother and I had been to be left out of her life, and that it wasn't fair to punish us for what she thought had happened. Am I the a-hole? Lol, not the a-hole by a mile. You just wanted to comprehend what was going on, while your sister was being shady. She also made that assumption that your mom cheated, and while I'm sure your dad is a respectable guy, it probably left your mom heartbroken to just feel cut off from her own kid like that. You didn't even do anything that bad as a follow-up. You just stated that it hurt you and your brother. You're a good person, just looking out for those around you. Keep being that good person. I believe she acted more fearfully, not wanting to perhaps damage the family. Not a all. Another AITA that could have been resolved by a single, relatively short conversation. Your brother did exactly what your sister should have done, and now she's probably very upset because she realizes how epically stupid her decisions were. No doubt she'll project some of that embarrassment on others and lash out, as is the way when people get owned as badly as this. Yes, this is how I feel. They basically ran into exactly the same problem, which was that dad's parents were immigrants from a very specific region of the world without a lot of genetic variants, but that region wasn't showing up at all in the DNA test. For my sister, this was the cause of her investigating further by secretly comparing our DNA. For our brother, this prompted him to ask, Hey mom and dad, what's the deal with this weird result? They had exactly the same situation, and his response was so reasonable while hers was so bizarre and difficult to understand. I just can't square it. My mom did a 23 and me and found a son, my half-brother, she had to give up for adoption over 50 years ago, that she never found due to sealed records. These DNA tools are fun but can be life-altering too. Not that that has parallels with your story other than, yeah, mad stuff altogether. Next story. Am I the a-hole for kicking out of the house my husband's aunt who criticized my bond with my cat after having a baby? Hey everyone, I find myself in need of some judgment since my family's divided and I still think I am not the a-hole. 
I'm looking for your honest opinions to help me assess if I was in the wrong here. I'm a woman in my late 20s, and I recently became a mother. I have been absolutely loving every aspect of motherhood. Alongside my newfound role as a mom, I have a cherished cat whom I have always shared a deep bond with. Even after the arrival of my baby, I have made it a point to continue involving my cat in our family life. We still go on little walks together around a garden, just the two of us, and I make sure to spend quality time snuggling and bonding with her. I also love how much my girl loves and cares for the baby. During a visit from my husband's family, his aunt decided to share their unsolicited opinion with me. It was kind of out of the blue. My cat is shy with people, so she was in my room looking through the window. When she wants my attention, she makes a particular meow. Husband told me and I went to check on her. After I came back, his aunt started going on about how having a cat around my baby could potentially be dangerous and implied that I should shift my focus away from my cat. She said it was not natural and that I should just focus on the baby, that a cat is a cat. I told her to get out of my house now. She was astonished and I told her it is extremely rude to go to other people's houses and starting to criticize how they live their lives, especially when we barely have a relationship. I have seen the woman three times in my life. One of them was the wedding. She and her sister got out. My husband told me I was right, but I was rude, and I could have said that in a better way. My sister-in-law, who was present, think I overreacted. I told my best friend that she's with me, but she's also a cat lover, so I don't know if it counts. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Reddit will probably downvote me for this one, but I'm going with everyone sucks here. Yes, your aunt was out of line for what she said. But immediately jumping to kick her and her daughter out of your home because of it? Yeah, that was an overreaction. It has nothing to do with being a cat lover or not. Agreed. The aunt was an a-hole, but that was a huge overreaction, so you kind of lost high ground. Although yes, huge reaction, but I think if you consider postpartum, her reaction isn't really out of the blue. Hormones are still going absolutely wild, so it seems completely understandable. Not a hole. Anne should have known better than to go into a freshly new mom's home and criticize her parenting choices. Some folks don't realize what an emotional slash hormonal blender roller coaster postpartum can be. Don't come into my house where I have achieved a balance that works for me and is safe and healthy for everyone, and then be shocked when I don't want your negativity around me. Nope, nope, nope. Cut that off real quick. Zero tolerance when my life and mental wellness are concerned. Say hi, compliment the baby, visit, then go home. None of that entailed telling Opie what to do. Everyone sucks here. Aunt was rude, but you escalated in an almost cartoonishly extreme way. The aunt was rude, but you could have brushed it off and ignored it. You could have laughed in her face. You could have said, thanks for clarifying your opinion. You could have looked at your hubby and said, wow, does all your family share unsolicited opinions? You could have stared at her and then deliberately changed the subject. Instead, you went for the most drama-filled option. Why? Everyone sucks here. I don't want to justify myself because it is what it is. But I have ADHD and BPD. I'm super impulsive and out of meds. Sometimes my judgment is clouded in this kind of things. But y'all are right. I could have de-escalated it. Edit? I agree with y'all. I overreacted. I'm not going to try and justify myself. I have to learn better coping skills for these situations. And that's on top of my list when I go back to therapy in three weeks. Just taking a break after labor. Adjusting to baby and home, etc. I would also like to say I don't feel like apologizing, but I will do it even though I will make clear she was out of line. I must say this woman is a busy body and overstayed her welcome, but I was rude and I admit it. Cat and baby get along great. Cat is protective and gentle towards baby and we have had zero issues. On the other hand, I got a DM saying I should give my baby up for adoption. Like WTF? That's an overreaction. Lol. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my dad I will not forgive him if he makes me get rid of my cat? I, female 16, live with just my dad, male 42. My mom left when I was 5 and I haven't seen her since. Two years ago, my dad started dating Chris, female 41. She's okay. We definitely aren't close. It's kind of me doing my thing and Chris doing her thing. 
I figured I'll be out of the house soon, so it doesn't really matter if my dad's girlfriend and I don't get along. Except, we have a big problem. I have a cat I got when I was 13 and she was just a kitten. She has helped me through a lot of tough times. When Chris first came over, she saw my cat and said she was allergic. Well, I don't believe it. She has been over for multiple days. Her eyes don't get puffy or watery, she doesn't sound congested or anything, and she also doesn't get hives or a rash or anything. So, I called BS. Because she constantly talks about how bad her allergies are, but I see no symptoms. Well, Sunday my dad proposed, and of course, Chris said yes. Her apartment lease is coming up for her to renew if she wanted, but last night they were talking about Chris just moving in with us. Then she said, well, if I'm living here full time, the cat has got to go. She complained she's not always going to deal with her allergies. I told them no, that I'm not willing to give up my cat. My dad pleaded with me saying it's unfair to Chris to have to deal with her allergies all the time while living with us. Chris kind of had a smirk on her face while my dad was trying to bargain with me, and in that moment, I knew she was definitely faking. After Chris left, I told my dad I will never forgive him if he makes me get rid of my cat. And I also told him I think Chris is faking being allergic to cats. He got mad and told me I'm being a selfish brat, and I just don't want him to be happy. I know some people will say my cat is just a pet, but she's honestly family to me. Chris sounds like a real delight. Is your dad going to be her second or third husband? Third. Third time say charm, I guess. Red flags. Sorry your dad is too infatuated to stand up for you. I literally told my dad that having two ex-husbands is a big red flag. He didn't listen though. Clearly, he has blinders on for Chris. Not the a-hole. You hold on to that kitty and don't let go. People like her think pets can just be tossed aside, and she is definitely testing your dad to see who he sides with. He is making a huge mistake, but unfortunately he won't see until it is too late, and his relationship with you has been destroyed. I think she is. I think my dad is going to ultimately take her side, but hopefully he won't. It just sucks because I'm his daughter. He raised me, and has obviously known me longer. Not a hole. This is an example of a power struggle where she wants your dad to pick her over you. It's a sample of what's to come. Can you have a family member or friend foster until you are out on your own? Maybe the cat and the daughter can stay with a family member. Girlfriend should be the one to live elsewhere until Opie moves out. Ideally, yes, but it seems like the dad is making the wrong choices. He is not thinking about Opie's cat. 